Are you a content creator looking for effects to bring your videos to a whole new level? Welcome to Production Crate. Production Crate is the resource for graphics, visual effects, music, and much more. On top of that, these assets are compatible with your editing software. Get your unlimited free effects today or premium effects for only $49 a year. Make it awesome. What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new Vegas 18 tutorial. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the best transitions and the most epic transitions of 2021. So these are actually transitions I covered on videos, but I thought I would actually like refresh your guys' mind a little bit. If you guys might have missed these videos, because of course in the entire playlist of Vegas Pro 18, we have many different videos for you guys to check out. Over 500 different videos. And I thought these ones would actually really, really step up your game because of course these are not like just the standard transitions in Vegas Pro. So if you guys are excited for this video and you want to see more make sure to smash the like button down below subscribe if you're here for the very first time watching i would say let's get into these really really epic transitions right after the intro guys so now that we are in vegas pro 18 right now i'll also leave a link down in the description where you can go ahead and download this effect as you can see with all kinds of different ink splatters they can just download straight away and import in your project so i'm going to show you guys exactly right now how to use this because you have to do some pre-rendering in order to be able to use this effect so so the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we will be able to see through this black ink so we're going to start off by going to the video effects tab which is right here and then we're going to go down to brightness and color Contrast. we're going to drag the default preset onto the ink clip right here and we're going to bring up the contrast quite a lot i would say to put the contrast on around between 0 0.600 and 0 0.700 that should be good enough but you can also crank it up all the way if you want to if you want to have like this really really sharp ink stain so we're going to close out that window for a second and then we're going to make sure that we will be able to see through the black ink so of course it's going to be on the top track because you want to have that one on a different track than your regular video that you will be seeing through the ink stain so what we need to do is we need to go to the compositing mode icon, which is on the very left of the screen of the ink track. And you want to set that one to screen. You know, if I move up this clip, we can now see through it. And now you would think that you would, for example, use the chroma key to get out the white. But I'm going to show you guys what happens if you do that. So if I put the default chroma key on the clip and I'm going to set this color to white right now. And if I'm going to enable it, as you can see right now, we don't see anything. And that's because we need to first render this clip without a chroma key with the white border. And then we need to chroma key that Y clip out of the rendered video. So first I'm going to choose which one I'm going to use. I think this one from the middle looks pretty nice. So I'm going to go up a few frames and then I'm going to make sure it's starting all the way when it's white like that. All right. So now we're going to match it up with this clip. So let's play it back. As you can see right now, you can see through the ink stain, but you can also make the stain a lot bigger if you want to. So if you want to resize this one, you want to go to the track motion icon of that ink track and you just want to resize this guy a lot bigger, for example, like that, position it a little bit. And now if I play it back, this is what it looks like and you can see a lot more through the actual ink screen or the transition. Of course, it's going to cut out right here, as you can see, to the next one. So we're going to trim that down until the next one starts, but we still have this white one and it just randomly disappears. We don't have like it's going full screen. So how to fix that is just resize this ink track until it's completely out of the screen and then you can just add in a fade out so let's play it back right now so that looks like a really really cool ink transition that we can now render out with the white because that is how you want to get it out in the next section all right so now that we've done that we're gonna go and select everything we want to export then we're gonna hit file hit render as and you want to of course pick the highest render settings that you always use so i'm gonna render out this clip let's say i'm gonna call this ink without c Okay, from chroma key and now we're gonna hit render okay guys so right now it's rendering it's only taking like 30 seconds because this is a really really short clip so i'll come back to you guys with you know the final touches when this one is finished exporting all right so the rendering is done so i'm gonna drag that rendered file in vegas pro this is the rendered file that we just made i'm gonna trim off this guy because i just rendered one black frame with it so now that we've done that this is what it looks like and now the only thing we need to do is get rid of the white so first before we're gonna remove the white from this ink stain we need to make sure that we will have a video lay underneath 
underneath it, of course. This is some studio footage, so let's say after this guitar shot, we're gonna fade into that next one. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna have this one overlaying in the studio because everything that we will be keying out in, ter in terms of like whiteness of this shot will be transparent. So if you don't have any video laying underneath the transition while that is running, it will turn to black. So make sure that you always have some footage below that track. All right, so the last thing that we need to do is go to the chroma key, drag on the default onto our clip that we just exported. You want to uncheck the chroma key for a second. So click on this colored bar, then put this pencil icon on the preview screen to pick the white color. And then we want to re-enable the chroma key and let's play back right now. As you can see right now, that looks really, really cool. And this is how you can create like a really cool ink stain effect or an ink transition. We have some white edges around these splashes. So what we need to do is we need to just bring up the low threshold just a little bit to get rid of these just like that and also bring down the high threshold. And that's how you can do it. And now if I play it back, this is what it looks like without any edges. It's a really, really cool ink stain effect that you can create yourself. And that is how to do it. And this is how simple it actually is. Now that we are in Vegas Pro 18, these are basically all the clips that I use in the montage that I showed you guys in the very intro. So we're starting off with the transitions that you can use with the event pan crop. You don't need any plugins. Now for the first one, we actually started with a regular fade in. So as you can see, if I drag this one right here, it says as dissolve from the Sapphire plugin, but this is not actual a Sapphire plugin. It's just a fade in. As you can see, if I play it back right now, if I just mute the audio for a second, this is just a regular fade in. Nothing too special as you can see, because it's because I tried actual a few plugins because I actually tried a few sapphire plugin transitions on this clip so that's why it says as dissolve but there's nothing more than just a fade in so as you can see this is an actual zoom right here so how we recreated that is of course with the event pan crop so let me show you guys how that's done so right here i have i'm gonna just delete this one and i'm just going to show you guys exactly how i did it we're gonna put two separate clips to each other then we're gonna stand in the middle of both clips and then we're gonna go back one two three four five six seven frames then we're gonna make a little cut because that's gonna be the length of the first zoom but then we also need to zoom out into this clip in the next one so we're gonna hit one two three four five six seven frames forward then we're gonna just go ahead and for example click on the event pan crop icon and then we're gonna make a keyframe to the very end of this little timeline right here and we're gonna just make a quick zoom for example like that now the cool thing is that we want to have this smooth transition very clearly you know and that's why we have to right click on that keyframe and we need to click on smooth so now we're gonna do the exact opposite for the next frame so we want to make sure that we'll start with this position of this on the second clip so we ended the first transition at the very end of this timeline with this position now let's say we're going to call this zoom now we're going to save that one as a, a preset then we're going to go to the second clip and then we're going to actually click on this zoom in template right here so it's the same position and then we're going to go to the very end right click and then we're going to hit restore now let's see what that looks like as you can see, it looks really, really cool. We have a nice zoom transition. And of course, you can apply that with multiple different ones. We have, for example, this slide as well. And that's just basically having like this slide event pan crop going to the left. And then on the other clip, you just want to have a slide in from the opposite side. And that's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. So on this clip, I don't have any transition. That's just a regular jump cut back to this clip. And then we have another transition right here, which is basically just this zoom. So how that works is let me show you guys by deleting these clips. Every single transition transition works exactly the same. Have two different clips onto each other, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames forward. And then on the one where we're gonna go out from, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames back. And then we're gonna go back to the event pan crop. And now you can basically do anything you want. If you, As long as you place your keyframe at the very end, you can, for example, make like a really, really fast zoom in, for example, and then right click and for example, hit vertical. So it actually adds these black lines. And we can also do that for the other 
one by putting this one in the same exact position, hit, of course, a vertical, and then go back to the end of the keyframe timeline, right click, and then hit restore. And this is basically what it looks like. We have this quick flash transition, as you can see, and that's not really, really too complicated. It, you can do actually a lot by just using the event pen crop without any plugins. But what I did for the actual plugins is actually just pretty straightforward as well. It works exactly the same as transitions without plugins. What you just need to do is you need to, for example, have seven frames forward, which is right here, and then seven frame backward. And then what you need to do is you need to hit on the event effects button. And then you want to go to the plugin chain right here. And then right here, we have a lot of different presets. So let's go ahead and start off with the first transition, which is going to be slide down A. We're going to hit add and hit on OK. Then we're going to go to the second clip. We're going to hit the plugin chain. And then, of course, we're going to pick slide down B. Go ahead and click on add, click on OK. And if I play it back, this is basically what it looks like. It looks really, really cinematic. But as you can see, as soon as it starts, you know, my, my color grading and my brightness and contrast disappears. So you just want to drag them on again by hitting the contrast one, which is that one, and also on the second clip. So as you can see right now, this is basically what it looks like. And that's how you use really, really cool transitions in Vegas Pro 18 with plugins and also without plugins. Because I think that you guys don't even realize yet how many cool transitions that you can make in just, you know, event pan crop that you don't need the Sapphire plugin for. You don't need any other, you know, transition packs to download. You you can just do a lot by just going to the event bank crop for example right here and then you want to make sure that you will always right click on your keyframes and for example mess around with the fast one with slow smooth sharp and all that that can really really make a big difference and there's nothing more to it actually so so if you guys have the sapphire plugin you can also go to the link down in the description i'll link a free transition pack for you guys to download right there it doesn't cost anything it is just a free pack that i found online i just want to promote and that's basically how you can you know step up your editing game and that's how you can also, you know, use a different transition than just regular jump cuts or regular J cuts or L cuts. There's nothing more to it. And this is how you can use some really, really smooth transitions. Now that we are in Vegas Pro 18, this is the project that I have open where I made the montage in with all the clips and all that. So I left a link down in the description. You want to go ahead and download it. It's completely for free, guys. And if you have it on your computer, you got to download the preset manager for uh, Vegas Pro or Sony Vegas Pro. I'll leave the link down in the description as well. So if if you have all of that, if you download the preset onto your computer and also the preset manager itself, if you open up the file, so right here, this box, it says preset manager 2.0, Vegas Pro 18 transition package. So if you double click on here, you will see the effects change folder. If we're going to double click on that right here, it will open up all the transitions that are in there. Now, of course, the cool thing is that you don't have to go ahead and install these all manually, you know, one by one. What you want to do is just want to select them all by holding your left mouse button and just drag it. And then you want to click on this icon, which says copy the system. Now you don't need to even restart Vegas Pro. You can, as you can see, I have Vegas Pro open in the background. So you don't need to, for example, like save your project and then just reopen Vegas. If you click on copy the system, as you can see, I already have them, but I'll just do it one more time for you guys. Everything is installed. We can actually get started with this. So I have a clip right here of me jamming. I'm not gonna delete the audio because uh, this is for my uh, album that's dropping in 2021. So I don't wanna leak any footage yet. So I'm gonna just delete that one. So let's say that I'm gonna pick this part right here. I'm just going to uh, cut it and then I'm going to pick this one. And then we need another clip, for example, this one where I'm also recording. I'm gonna delete the audio for a second. So then I have this part, so I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. So now you guys see that I have two clips because of course you need two different clips in order to make that transition happen. Now, I think, you know, the most of you guys that have been subscribed for years and have seen hundreds of videos of mine know how this already works. But for the people that are new and or maybe like kind of forgot about it and people that knew it at first, it is actually pretty simple. So these presets work actually with you know only at the end part of an entire clip so you're not going to drag in and tr a preset onto this entire clip you're going to always make a little small cut at the end of the first clip and at the beginning of the second clip so let's say that we're going to count five or six frames back so i'm going to stand on the very edge i'm going to zoom in a little bit so if i go back one two three four five frames and then i go five frames forward on the next clip one two three four five i'm going to make a cut so right here you can see that these will be the really really tiny parts where we're going to apply that transition on. All right, so now that we have cut it and now that we decide where we're going to put it, right here it says the effects chain button next, or the event effects rather, next to the event pan crop. So we're going to pick the 
first one. And this basically works in two sections. So I'm going to show you guys right now. If you click on here, here are all the presets. So every single transition, even if it's just one, exists out of two you know, presets that you need to pick. So the first one is going to be A, and then the second one, you know, the second transition on the second clip is called B. So that's how it works. So let's say that you want to use, for example, the slide left. What you want to do is you want to pick, of course, slide left A for the first one, click on add, and then we're gonna click on okay. We're gonna close this out for a second. Then we're gonna go to the first clip of the second one. And then we're gonna go to the event effects, and then we're going to pick slide left B, which is right here because of course the first one is slide left a so now we're going to click on add and click on okay now our presets and our transitions are in here so let's play it back and let's see what it looks like okay as you can see that looks really really smooth but but if i go on a frame by frame it could be a little bit better because of course right here you can see my can and my speaker and my cap and all that are getting mirrored so that's where we want to go to the event effects button and right here we have the keyframe now we want to drag this guy all the way to the end of the clip we're going to also do that for the second one the event effects we're going to drag this keyframe all the way to the end and then let's see what it looks like so as you can see it's a really really quick one and that's a very very nice transition so let's go ahead and remove these transitions for a second okay so now that i remove them as you can see right here what we can do is we can go to the next one which is for example if i go to effects chain right here it says for example let's pick the zoom in a now we're going to click on add click on okay now we're going to go to the second clip and we're going to pick of course zoom in b so now let's click on add and click on okay and let's play it back right now that looks really, really cool. And if you want to have this one like zoomed out right here, because of course right here, as you can see, it zooms in. If you want to have this one zoomed in like that and this one zoomed out, we can go back to the event effects and we can replace this guy with, of course, zoom out B, which is this one. Click on add, click on okay. So now that we have a first zoom in and then into the second clip, we have a zoom out. So this is what it looks like. That looks really, really tight. And if you're going to add in some color grading as well, like I did on the uh, the official montage from the intro, you're going to add in like some really, really, you know, opacity, low kind of light leak effects on it. And, you know, the proper music, because of course, these clips are not graded yet. This is just raw from the camera. So this is just really quick to show you guys how this actually works. And it is that simple, guys. These are basically a lot more transitions that you guys can discover. The link to this package is down in the description. It's completely for free. And I will also leave the link down below to the pre preset manager that you need in order to be able to install these presets into your DAW and that's basically how it is guys this is how to do it you can add this with multiple different drone shots or travel footage or whatever you guys are editing or even montages when you're making a kill you can make like a really quick zoom out it just the options are endless guys the link is down below and these are basically more cinematic you know transitions for Vegas Pro 18 and basically a new under version that you guys are using all right guys so that's this for this video now you guys know how to create these really really epic transitions in vegas pro 18 now also let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite thanks a lot for the continued support guys i'll see you guys of course tomorrow in a brand new video as always on tuesday so thanks a lot for the continued support and i'll see you guys obviously in tomorrow's video